Today I'd like to do another video as part of my vehicle preps video series and this one's going to feature fire extinguishers. Now fire extinguishers are very common in a home and office setting but oftentimes they're omitted in your vehicle even though there's hundreds of thousands of vehicle fires that are reported uh, each year in the U.S. alone. So for this particular video we're going to go over a few different types of fire extinguishers. We're going to talk about the classifications of them and we'll do some demo scenarios. So let's get started now with this video featuring fire extinguishers. I'm going to be featuring a few different fire extinguishers as part of this video. The first one to show is a class ABC fire extinguisher. This one is made by Amerex. Amerex is very popular here uh, where I live. Oftentimes you'll see it in business settings, uh, school settings, uh, supermarkets, anything like that. You'll see them using an Amerex on there. Uh, I think the best thing about them is that they're rechargeable, uh, at least the majority of the ones. Look for ones that have metal handles. Usually uh, those ones equate to rechargeable, although uh, don't quote me on that if there's a, a rare exception on it. This one's a decent size for a vehicle too. Not too large, not too big. So a class ABC Amrex. The second one that I'll be featuring is made by First Alert. This is a smaller fire extinguisher, so if space is an issue, uh, this is a possibility. You may want to have two of them uh, just because it's not as large as the previous one that we showed. This one's a class BC fire extinguisher. Again, we'll talk about the classes in more detail later, but these are the most important ones to have in a vehicle because we're talking about flammable liquids and electronics. So uh, things like a wood and paper isn't as important for a vehicle. And this one's a very small size. You can fit it under your seat very easily. It has a nice little uh, mount on it as well. First Alert Alert and Kid are probably the more popular ones if you search on uh, Amazon, for example, for uh, whether that be uh, smoke detectors, fire extinguishers, those ones come up often as well, although I think I probably prefer uh, the Amorex to the first alert. And then the last one that I'll be featuring is a class Purple K made by Amorex. This is kind of the deluxe fire extinguisher to include in your vehicle due to the uh, components of Purple K, which we'll talk in more detail later. It's the same size as the previous one that I showed. It's just a, a class Purple K, which is twice as much. The hardest part about having a fire extinguisher in your vehicle, in my opinion, is how and where to properly store it. You don't want these things flying around if you were to get in a car accident, for example. Uh, they're very heavy and they would result in a bad situation. So you want to have these safely mounted to your vehicle so that would not happen. So to be honest, I haven't settled on the exact mounting method that I want to use for my vehicles, although I have my backup plan. And basically the backup plan is to buy uh, the mounting kit, which you could purchase online. And basically with that mounting kit, you could take a fire extinguisher of this size and you would store it in the front of your passenger seat and the mount kit attaches to where the seat uh, mounts to the floorboard of your vehicle and then it tucks the fire extinguisher into right below the front passenger seat and just kind of uh, down and out of the way and it's in a, a easy access location for a uh, quick access uh, the only problem with that mount kit is that it's a little pricey at around 60 65 dollars or so so in the meantime before i've invested in that i've been experimenting with some uh, diy uh, techniques uh, one method is to that i've been looking into at least is to use some rare earth magnets in the mounting kits that come with the fire extinguishers and these are uh, 70 pound rare earth magnets and attaching them to the screw holes of the mounting kit and then attaching that to a metal surface in conjunction with some other kind of uh, mounting technique like uh, zip ties for example so these rare earth magnets are very strong they're able to support a lot of weight although i still have concerns with them you, with the vehicle accidents could be very violent and I, I just wouldn't want these coming out at all so uh, i'm experimenting with it uh, in, in, the, in the meantime, and then I may just settle on getting the mounting kit, which I'll probably end up doing. And I'm going to be saving that for a later video. So if you happen to have a Jeep or a truck that has a roll bar, mounting is very easy. You just attach it to that uh, roll bar and you're good to go. I'm actually quite jealous of people that have roll bars in their vehicles. I don't have any of mine, but it'd be very easy to store fire extinguishers in that way. And oftentimes with Jeeps, you'll see them having one to two fire extinguishers stored there, uh, which is awesome. So <laughs> I wish I had that capability, but I don't. So you're either going to have to invest in the mounting kit or do some other kind of mounting method uh, to have it s securely stored in your vehicle so they don't fly around in an accident. Class ABC fire extinguishers are filled with a dry chemical agent called monoammonium phosphate, and each one of those letters, A, B, and C, represent something different. Class A fires are fires that are fueled by organic combustible materials such as wood, cloth, paper, rubber, and many plastics. So they're best served for wood burning stoves, campgrounds, and things just in general outdoor activities, not necessarily for vehicles because you don't have a lot of wood in your vehicle. Class B fires are fires that are fueled by flammable liquids, so combustible liquids, petroleum greases, tars, oil-based paints, solvents, lacquers, alcohol, and flammable gases, so all of these are applicable to a vehicle. Class C fires are for electrical fires that are involving energized electrical equipment, uh, things like you might have in your dashboard, for example, uh, batteries, things like that. Those are electrical fires, and those are also applicable to a vehicle. 
Class K fires are a different type of class of fire extinguisher, and they're mainly applicable to restaurant kitchens. So think of K as kitchen. So any kind of fire that would happen there, uh, such as a, a burning vegetable or animal oils and fats. So grease fires, they're not applicable to a vehicle fire extinguisher. Now let's talk about decoding the UL rating. So for example, you may have an ABC fire extinguisher that might have a UL rating of 4-A colon 80-B colon C. So here's how it works. So basically the numbers in the UL rating are a relative measurement of how effective a given extinguisher is at fighting certain classes of fires. And that's based on proper training, of course. Let's start off first with A. So A is the, no the number in front of A measures the extinguisher's water equivalency. So a single A is, is equivalent to 1.25 gallons of water. So a unit with a fire extinguisher rating of 4-A has an equivalent of 5 gallons of water to battle class A fires. B, the number in front of the B illustrates a relative measurement of how much square footage the extinguisher could cover. So if you see 80B, that's 80 square feet of coverage. The letter C and K don't really have a number that's associated with it. Basically, when you see these, these letters indicate that an extinguisher can be used effectively against these fire classes, and that's it. Purple K fire extinguishers make use of a dry chemical component to combat class B and class C fires, although the purple K is a much more heavy duty version of it. So it's not effective for class K fires, despite how the name might suggest. Again, class K fires are kitchen fires, so we're talking about uh, flammable uh, cooking grease. So purple K fire extinguishers are most effective against flammable liquids like tars, petroleum greases, oil-based paints, solvents, alcohol, and flammable gases, as well as electrical fires. It has about four to five times more effectiveness against class B fires than carbon dioxide and more than twice that of sodium bicarbonate. So Purple K is commonly used in oil refineries, airport ramps, service stations, military facilities, naval warships, power plants, and other places where large volumes of flammable liquids are handled. It has a, a violet color to it to distinguish from other dry agents. Just keep in mind that the cleanup of a spent agent can be very difficult as it creates a, a mess when it's discharged. Again, so you're going to see a bright purple everywhere. So a Purple K should never be mixed with phosphate-based fire suppression agents like ABC Dry Chemical as the resulting chemical reaction will destroy its efficiency. I'm here with Kid Prepper and we're gonna discharge two of the fire extinguishers. Kid Prepper has the first alert class BC fire extinguisher. I have the Amerex class ABC one. We're gonna discharge it into this container over here. Uh, we're gonna save the purple K one just cause it's a little bit more expensive. So we're gonna be following the PASS technique when discharging these. So if you follow the acronym PASS, it basically stands for pull. So pull the pin, aim, aim the fire extinguisher, uh, squeeze, and then sweep. So after we squeeze, squeeze it, we're gonna sweep it uh, to put out the fire, and you always wanna aim towards the base of the fire, the source of it. So you got it? So pass technique, mm. pull. What's pass technique? Pass is pull, aim. Oh, you mean like? Squeeze what do you and sweep, yeah. Where do you pull this? Yeah, I'll show you. Do you, you. pull that forward? <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> All right, so for the pass technique, P is, is we're gonna pull the pin, a is for aim, we're gonna aim it towards the container there. S, we're gonna squeeze. And then the other S, we're gonna sweep. So sweep means like, like spread, like that. You got it? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get going. Well, how do you use it? Well, we're gonna do it right now. How do you use it? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> There's that one. No. Now this one's not, re you can't recharge this one. So this one's done, it goes in the trash after that. That was cool, wasn't it? You, you have to throw that away? Yeah, we do. Why? That's fun. Here's what that substance looks like. So it kind of has like a nice turquoise color to it, right? Uh -huh. All right, you ready to throw the next one? Oh, okay. All right, this let's, one? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, that has smoke on it. It sure does. All right. Okay, so you pull which pin? Pull the pin. Uh-huh. Okay, pull it out. No, Mom, can I do it? Try it. Can you hold it so I'll I can? Hold it. Pull the pin. All right, that protects it. Now we're going to aim. What now you're going to squeeze and sweep. Like this? Yep, there you go. You got it. Oh my God. Oh, nice. Oh my God. <laughs> Probably should have had goggles on that, huh? huh? Here, let's back up this way so the wind. Here we go. Oops. I tasted it. Yeah, yeah I don't want to do that. Why? Ready? Here we go.
Can I try? It's all done. Now we could recharge this one. I guess I probably should have had goggles and a mask on it, but I guess if it was a real fire, I wouldn't have that anyway, right? That's how you do a fire extinguisher. This is how the bucket looks. Yeah. Steamy. Yep. And this is how this real glass looks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Alright, so that was the demo scenario of discharging those fire extinguishers. The class BC one, uh, the first alert one, looked like it had a turquoise color to it, and the class ABC one had more of a yellow color to it, and lasted a lot longer. Uh, as you see, it made a little bit of a mess too. But uh, there we go, on the demo of the fire extinguishers. Here's what that gauge looks like after it's been discharged. So previously it was at the green, uh, now it's over here on the left, so it needs to be refilled. So you go to local facilities that offer that service for refilling, and it's gonna cost, it'd be much cheaper than it would be just to cost a brand new extinguisher. So anyway, empty gauge. <laughs> okay. So during the filming of that section, I was more concerned about getting the sunlight right for the actual uh, demo scenario, and I didn't take into account the wind direction. Uh, as you saw when we were doing that, that the wind, uh, fortunately, it, it started going the other way and we were able to adjust for that. But that's definitely something to take into account when spraying these because they go all over the place. And if the uh, wind's in the wrong spot, uh, you can really get a lot of uh, extinguisher in, in your face a little bit. But we've, we've cleaned up, kid prepper's all cleaned up, and I'm just kind of cleaning up my mess afterwards. But it's definitely something to take into account. Hopefully I didn't just kill that patch of grass either. I'm gonna have to look it up online. You probably should have used uh, goggles and gloves and a mask kind of to be extra careful. But I was thinking that we should do it in an emergency situation when you might not have time to do that. So uh, just to kind of practice for that. But probably safety for us. We should have done that, huh? Next time. That's going to do it for this video featuring vehicle fire extinguishers. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. Again, the hardest part about the fire extinguishers for your vehicle is where to store them and how to mount them. Uh, but once you figure that out, you're going to be glad that you have it in there in case of an emergency. So please leave any kind of comments below in the comment section regarding this video. And stay tuned for the next video as part of this vehicle preps video series. See you guys next time.